Aghus Billahi Min Shaitan Rajeeb Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Welcome to the second lecture of this uh, week two. In the last lecture, we discuss uh, solidification and the shrinkage during the uh, casting process. And during while discussing that solidification, we discuss Shabinov's rule that is used to calculate the time required to uh, time required for solidification of the cast product. And that Shabinov's rule plays a vital role in designing the riser. So we will start with a numerical problem, which says a cylindrical riser must be designed for a sand casting mold. The sand casting itself is a steel rectangular plate with the dimensions 7.5 cm into 12.5 cm and 2 cm. Previous observations have indicated that the total solidification time for this casting is 1.6 minute. The cylinder for the riser will have a diameter to height ratio equals to 1, means it will have equal diameter and height. Determine the dimension of the riser so that its time to solidify is 2 minutes. So we have two time for solidification. The first one is for the casting one and the second one is for the riser. As you can see here, the time for solidification of casting is lesser than the time to solidification for the riser. So let's write down the Chauvinov's rule first. What was this Chauvinov's rule? That was time required for solidification equals to mole constant into volume by surface area exponent n, where v was the volume of the cast product. You can say volume of the or mold cavity and surface and surface area A is the surface area of the mold cavity We start by calculating the volume of the cast product that was equals to as it is given in the statement 7.5 into 12.5 into 2 and that makes up if you use calculator for this one 187.5 centimeter cube for the surface area what it says the casting itself is a steel rectangular plate. The casting itself is a steel rectangular plate. So just draw a steel rectangular plate here. Okay, so it says, uh, let's say the longest side is twelve point five. This side equals to seven point five centimeter, and the thickness of two centimeter. Now to calculate the surface area, how many faces we have? The surface area of this top face, right? Plus the surface area of this bottom face, we have it here at the bottom, and plus surface area of this face and this face on the left, and the surface area of this front face plus the surface area of the face at the back. So we'll start with the surface area of this this top and the bottom face that is equals to 
12.5 centimeter into 7.5 centimeter right and because we have two faces so we have two into 12.5 into 7.5 okay plus the other face that is this front face this face and the face at the back this back face so it is equals to 2 into 7.5 2 into 7.5 and we have two faces first face and second face at the back that is equals 2 into the surface area plus now we have the side faces this one on the right and that one on the left so that is equals to 2 into 12.5 12.5 and because we have two faces on the right and, the, and on one on the left that is two times so if we calculate this one so the total surface area we will get that is equals to 267.5 centimeter square so we have two values the surface area of our cast product and the volume or cost product now the second thing we have uh, we need to calculate we have the volume we have surface area we know the time for solidification for the cost is 1.6 minutes so we can directly calculate the mole constant right so we can calculate the mole constant cm equals to cts divided by v by a exponent n so that would be equals to 1.6 divided by 187.5 divided by 267.5 exponent 2 so if we calculate using the calculator we will get the answer equals to 3.26 minutes per centimeter square this is the mole constant for this mole right for this mechanism with the with this dimension and the time the mole constant would be 3.26 minutes per centimeter square now we have the mole constant what it say what uh, what we need to determine determine the dimension of the riser of so that its time to solidification is 2 minutes so we will use the same mole constant for this one right and we have the time to solidification is 2 minutes right because we are using the same mole constant because it is dealing with the same mole so the cm is the same we have the time to solidification and all you need to determine is the volume and the area of the riser so let me erase this calculation of So what it says we have a cylindrical riser so the volume of cylinder would be pi d square h by 4 and the surface area of the cylinder is equals to pi d h plus 2 pi d square by 4 and there's one condition that is given in this sub in this statement that is it has d by h ratio equals to 1 
it has d by h ratio equals to 1 means diameter is equals to height or you can just diameter is equals to height so you can just place the diameter equals to height so we will have the volume equals to pi d cube by 4 either take it in, in, in the height form or we can just reduce it for the diameter and same the case with the area we will have the area equals to pi d square plus 2 pi d square by 4 and that makes up 1.5 pi d square okay so this is the volume and area for riser now we can use the Shrovenov's rule for the riser that was equals to GTS CMV by A exponent N and TTS was equals to 2 minutes as given in the statement here that was equals to 2 minutes and the CM is equals to 3.26 as we calculated into V by A we have pi d cube by 4 divided by 1.5 pi d square exponent 2 so you can just simply cancel out this one and you can cancel out this one you can simplify it So we will have d by 6 square equals to into 3.2 equals to Two minutes so you can simplify this one for the D so ultimately we will have the value of 4.7 centimeter this is the diameter for the riser and as we have D equals to H so this will be the height of the riser as well and using this you can simply calculate the volume of the riser as well as the surface area so we have the dimension now As you can see here, uh, just use this value d by h for any of those volume or the area. I will just erase this one. Let's put these values in the volume. So volume would be equals to pi into d cube. What was the value of d? 4.7 exponent 3 divided by 4. And that would be equals to 81.5 centimeter cube. That was for the riser. While the volume, while the volume for the cast product was equals to 187.5 centimeter cube that was for the cast product and this is for the riser so we can see the difference between them that's approximately the volume of the riser is only 44 percent of the volume of casting so you can see here that the volume of the riser is only 44 percent of the volume of the casting but it's still its time for solidification is higher than the time 
and required for casting to solidify. So this is why we need to consider the shape such that the V by A ratio of the riser is higher than the V by A ratio of the casting so that we can have the higher time required for solidification. Now we'll consider some exercise problems of our book. Let's start with uh, problem number one. It says a disc 40 cm in diameter and 5 cm thick is to be cast of pure aluminum in an open mold casting operation. The melting temperature of aluminum is 660 6, degrees centigrade and the pouring temperature will be 800 degrees centigrade. Assume the amount of aluminum heated will be 5% more than what is needed to be filled the mold cavity. Compute the amount of heat that must be added to the metal to heat it to the pouring temperature. <clears throat> so we need to calculate the heat that is required to supply to achieve the pouring temperature of 800 degrees centigrade for this pure aluminum. So if we remember the formula that was required to calculate the heat supply to achieve the pouring temperature that was equals to rho v the density into volume into specific heat in the solid state and the difference between the pouring temperature and the melting point plus heat of fusion plus specific heat in the liquid state and uh, sorry this one is If you remember the formula that is used to calculate the heat supplied to achieve the pouring temperature that was equals to density into the volume times specific heat in the liquid state into the temperature difference that was between pouring temperature and the melting temperature plus heat of fusion plus specific heat in the solid state and from melting temperature to the tina room temperature okay so here h equals to uh, let's calculate the volume first it says disc of 40 centimeter diameter and 5 centimeter thick so the volume of disc is equals to id square h by 4 and we have I into 40 square into 5 divided by 4 and that is equals to 6283.2 centimeter cube <coughs> but it says Assume that the amount of aluminium heated will be 5% more than what is needed to fill the mold cavity. So the mold would be equal to this one, but we need to heat 5% more aluminium than what is required. So the volume that will be heated, volume that will be heated is equals to that would be 1.05 times of 6283.2. So that would be equals to 6597.3 centimeter cube. So this is the volume that will be heated. So we have the density of the aluminium equals to 2.70 grams per centimeter cube. Whereas the specific heat equals to zero point specific heat in the solid state equals to zero point eight eight count dot centigrade and specific heat in the liquid state would be equals to zero point two one. So you can directly put the values in this formula 
we have as equals to density into the volume that is to be heated then we have Cl that the pouring temperature is 800 degrees centigrade minus the melting temperature plus heat of fusion is given in the question the, the statement that is 389.3 plus 0 0.88 into 660 minus 25 so we can calculate this one using the calculator we will have the total value of one nine zero eight two seven five six joules okay this is our the heat that is required to heat this volume of aluminium to achieve the temperature of pouring temperature of 800 degrees centigrade ideally Now let's move on to the second numerical. It says a sufficient amount of pure copper is to be heated for casting a large plate in an open mold. Open mold, obviously, which is, which is in direct contact with the atmosphere. The plate has dimensions, uh, the length equals to 20 inches, and the thickness equals to 3 inches, and the width equals to 10 inches. Compute the amount of heat that must be added to the metal to heat it to a temperature of 215 Fahrenheit. Assume that the amount of metal heated will be 10% more than what is needed to fill the mold cavity. And the properties of the metal is given here. Again, we will have the similar method. We will simply calculate the volume using the given data. And the volume that is to be heated is 10% more. That is equal to 1.10 into the v naught then and then we will use this volume in the formula of heating okay so this is how we can directly get the answer we can move on towards the uh, Next numerical. <coughs> it says during pouring into a sand mold, the molten metal can be poured into a down screw at a constant flow rate. During this time, during the time it takes to fill the mold. At the end of the pouring, the screw is filled and there is negligible metal in the pouring cup. The screw is six meter 6 inches long and its cross sectional area at the top is 0.8 inch square and at the base is 0 0.6 inch, inch square the cross sectional area of the runner leading from the screw also 0.6 inches square and it is 8 inch long before leading to the mold cavity whose volume is 6, 65 inch cube so you can just draw our general schematic this is our pouring curve then down screw into the runner. This is a pouring curve then down the screw into the runner. And this is our so it says We have a screw with the area at the top is 0 0.8 inches square and area at the bottom is 0.8 that is 0 0.8 inches square and the area at this bottom is 0 0.6 inches square and the total length of the screw is uh, 6 inches 
So the total length of the screw is 6 inches. And it says uh, the cross section area of the runner leading from the screw was also 0.6. So this is also 0.6. This cross section area is also 0.6, like this one. And the total length of the runner is 0.8. So we have the total length of the runner is equals to, oh, sorry, 8 inches, not 0.8, 8 inches. And it says the total volume of the mold cavity is 65 inch cube and the volume of the riser located along the runner near the mold cavity is 25 inch cube. So we have 25 inch cube. So it says it takes a total of 3 seconds to fill the entire mold including cavity, riser, runner and screw. This is more than the theoretical time required including indicating a loss of velocity due to friction in the screw and the runner. Right? So the time 3 second is uh, lesser than the theoretical time required because of some friction losses. Find theoretical velocity, flow rate at the base of the down screw and find the total volume of the mold and find also calculate the actual velocity and flow rate at the base of the screw and loss of head in the gearing system due to friction. So let's start with the section A of this one, where it says find the theoretical velocity and the flow rate at the base of the down screw. So what was the loss uh, formula for the flow velocity? That was V equals to under root 2 G H, and it makes 2 into because of inch per second. Is the system so we will use 32.2 foot per second square into 12 to convert it to the inches into the height and that is equals to 6 inches for the screw under root so if we calculate it we will get the answer it's equals to 68.1 inch per second this is our flow velocity For the volumetric flow rate, we have flow rate equals to cross-sectional area into the velocity and that would be equals to, we have cross-sectional area at the bottom of the down screw is 0 0.6 into the flow velocity that is 68.1. So it makes up flow rate of 40.8 inch cube per second. So this is the part A. Second one we have in the part B it asks the total volume of this cavity. So that would be equals to volume of the mold cavity that is 65 plus volume of the riser plus volume of this runner that is 0.6 into this 8 inches we will have 0 0.6 into 8 inches plus volume of the down screw so we have 6 inches length and uh, you can take the average of 0 0.8 to 0.6 because it is 0 0.8 inches square at the top and 0 0.6 inches cross section area at the bottom. So we will have 6 inches into 0 0.8 plus 0 0.6 divided by 2. So we will have the answer that is equals to if we sum up all these it makes up 99 inches square inch cube in the third section it asks the actual velocity in the flow rate at the base of the screw and the head loss so to calculate the actual velocity at the base of the screw and the head loss we will have the formula that equals to uh, 
So in the section C, it asks about calculating the actual velocity and the flow rate based on the actual time that was three seconds. And as a statement says, it is more than that theoretical time. So as we know that the time required to fill the mold is equals to velocity by volume divided by the volumetric flow rate. And to calculate the actual volumetric flow rate, we can have Q equals to the velocity divided by the actual time. What was the velocity here? The vol volume here, the total volume was 99 inch cube divided by the time, that is 3. So we have 33 inch cube per second. That is the volumetric flow rate, actual volumetric flow rate. And same is the case with the actual velocity, we know that the volumetric flow rate equals to cross sectional area into the velocity. So to calculate the actual velocity using this value, we will have velocity equals to 33 divided by 0 0.6 cross sectional area. That would be equals to 55 inch per second. <coughs> now, the last section, D, the loss of head in the gearing system due to friction. So, we'll calculate the velocity. We can we'll find out the loss of head using the <coughs> using the form formula of velocity, and that is equals to under root two g h. So we'll have 2 into 32.2 converted into inch per second square into h and we are not taking the original head we need to calculate the head for the time 3 second and for that one we will take the velocity we will cal just calculate it here so we will have velocity equals to 55 and that's exponent 0.5. So if we solve for this one, we will have 27.8 into h exponent 0.5 equals to 55. Or we will have h exponent 0.5 equals to 1. 978 or h equals to 3.914 inches. So the loss in head, so the loss of head equals to 6 minus 3.914 and it equals to 2.086 inches. So this is the end of this numerical. It it has said that it has uh, we have a mole cavity of 65 inch cube and the rise of 25 inch cube at down sprue with the length of 6 inches and has a cross sectional area of 0.8 at the top and 0.6 at the bottom. And we have a runner with 0.6 cross sectional area and a 8 inches long. And more metal is poured in such a way that the molten metal is uh, filled up to this level. It is not in the pouring cup. So what it says, it asks about the theoretical velocity and the volumetric flow rate based on the theoretical values of this head and the volumetric flow rate based on this theoretical velocity. Then it asks about the total volume. That means the volume of metal in the this mold cavity plus in the riser in this runner and the down swoop. So this is our total volume. Then it says it is actually taking three seconds to fill this complete cavities, this complete cavity, and that is less than the theoretical value. And uh, sorry, that is more than the theoretical value. So based on this, it asks about the actual velocity and the volumetric flow rate. So we took out the formula for time required to fill the mold that is the equal to velocity divided by the volumetric flow rate. So we need to find out the volumetric flow rate. So we calculate the volumetric flow rate using the 
actual time that was 3 seconds and see the case of the volumetric flow rate and to calculate the loss of head we calculated the velocity we use the formula for flow velocity taking into consideration the actual head and we find out the actual head based on the velo if our velocity is 55 inch per second and from this we are able to calculate the loss in head that is 2.086 inches so there will be a drop of 2.8086 inches here it will be somewhere around 4.086 inches somewhere so this is all for this lecture should you have any question you will reach me at the google classroom so